So hi guys, welcome to my new course which is a project based course. In this course we will learn how to design and implement finite state machine library. So now let me brief you what this course is all about. This is a project based course which involves only coding. There is absolutely minimum or no theory at all in this course. I will explain the concept and you need to implement it right away. The programming language used in this course is C, but you can use your favorite programming language to do this course. I will demonstrate and show you the example codes which are written in C, but if your favorite programming language is Python, Java or C++, then you can implement the same concept in your favorite programming language. So this course is programming language agnostic. We will implement a programmable finite state machine library which is also called as finite automata. Now you must have learned this term in your second year of your UG course. So it is the prerequisite of this course that you already know how to draw simple finite state machines for simple problems. This course is not about how to draw FSM that is finite state machine, what finite state machines are and what is their purpose. The prerequisite of this course is that that you already have a very basic knowledge of finite state machines. For example, if you cannot determine what this finite state machine that is shown in this diagram do, then probably you should not take this course. This is a finite state machine which accepts all the strings on 0 and 1 which ends with 1. So we were going to design and implement a library which provide the finite state machine functionality to the application. The application can use this library to harness the FSM benefits. And we should be already aware that what are FSM benefits? Finite state machines can be used for pattern matching. For example, does the input string has at least three zeros or not? The finite state machines can be used for validation. For example, does the input string represent a valid email ID or not? And finite state machines can also be used to perform calculations. For example, flip the bits of the input string, compute the complement of a given number, etc. So once we develop this finite state machine library, the application can use this finite state machine library to perform any of these three functions. So now let us understand what are the prerequisites of this course. This course assumes that you are good enough in coding. This is not a programming language teaching tutorial or this course doesn't teach you programming language. This course requires that your coding level is at least above beginner level. If you are still struggling with the basic data structures such as linked list, queues, then probably you should spend more time in learning those basic data structures than to enroll in my courses which are project based. So you must be comfortable with the basic data structures and you must be very comfortable with the function pointers or callbacks. Now if in case you are not comfortable with function pointers or callbacks, then this is the time to learn the actual application of function pointers in programming languages. All the mainstream programming languages have function pointers and function pointers help you to write generic code. So this is the best opportunity you can ever get to do a project which exploit the use of function pointers or callbacks in the best possible way. We will going to implement something which is meaningful and useful with the help of callbacks. This course assumes that you have a basic knowledge of finite state machines or automata. For example, if I give you a problem statement that can you create a finite state machines which accepts all the strings which have alternate zeros and ones, then you should be able to draw this finite state machine. So this course assumes that you understand finite state machine at least at a basic level. Now let us discuss what are the appropriate audience of this course. So the audience set of this course comprises of students who have completed the third semester of their undergraduate curriculum. In third semester only you have a subject on theory of computation in your syllabus. So if you have already done the subject theory of computation in your undergraduate syllabus, 
then I have no reason why you should not do this course unless you are not interested in coding. Working professionals can also enroll in this course because this course actually because after doing this course you will be able to understand how to design a programmable generic library, how to make use of function pointers, how to make use of callbacks, how to segregate the functionality which should be a part of library and the functionality which should be a part of application. Doing such courses you actually learn many design aspects of developing a good software. I have more project based courses if you would like to be interested please visit my website and have a look. Then of course the audience which love coding would definitely going to like this course. The best takeaway from this course is that you would learn the art of problem solving. Now the problem solving is something that is very subjective. No particular one course or one topic or one professor can teach you the art of problem solving. You develop the art of problem solving within inside you by doing more and more problems. Now this problem solving is not at the level of just writing some toy programs of competitive programming but this problem solving includes developing certain software application or library which actually solve a meaningful problem. And of course after doing this project you can list this project on your resume with all proud. So I guarantee you this will going to be a very interesting course. So after doing this course you will be able to learn the non-trivial application of function pointers and callbacks. You will also learn how to write programmable code that is program the program. So almost all libraries have a very common property that they should be programmable by the application. Libraries should perform as instructed by the application. In this course you will also learn how to write a complete library from scratch. You will also learn the do's and don'ts of writing a good library. And of course the main aspect of doing project based courses is that you really learn how to design and solve a problem. The end product of this course is that you will have a fully fledged working finite state machine library and your application can make use of this library as per your needs. As I said before you can use this library for pattern matching, for validation or performing certain computations. So good luck guys I hope you will enjoy this course as much as I do.